Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another foray into the world of home automation with your host, Paul Hibbert. Uh, I have a confession to start out today. I managed to lose a hard drive uh, because I am a moron. I have not have ever had a backup of my hard drives. I've never had a backup system in place. I did back up my photos, thankfully, uh, but I've lost uh, an inconceivable amount of wondrous and beautiful things that I'll probably never get back. Um, my hard drive is at present going through uh, the process of trying to recover that data uh, at a friend's house. Um, I did try myself uh, with a couple of pieces of software and he said, oh, no, no, just bring it to me. So uh, my friend Bart is now doing that. Thank you, Bart. Um, so I might get my data back. I might not. Uh, I decided that off the back of this, I would get one of these. That is a uh, not a NAS box, it is a micro server. I was going to get a NAS box and a friend at work saw me on Amazon and went, No, 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 what are you doing? Don't buy that. What a waste of money. Get a micro server. They are far less expensive um, and you're mildly geeky, for crying out loud. Uh, do something proper. Uh, put an operating system on it. Give yourself some more opportunity. So I, I looked at this micro server and thought, you know what? I could do quite a few things with this, it wouldn't just be a backup solution. Um, later on, when me and Nisha finally get our own house, um, <laughs> hopefully when I get another job I'm about to be made redundant. Brilliant, thank you for that. Um, I, I will be planning to put this micro server in the living room, attach to the television and put XBMC on it and probably Vox Commando and Event Ghost and have a whole load of home automation down in the living room uh, and have my main PC that I have now upstairs in the bedroom doing what it does now, which is switching lights on and off and uh, loading up movies with the power of my voice. Uh, so yeah, see my previous videos if you've not seen all that good stuff before. So the idea is that I'm going to put this micro server uh, in my new house downstairs and have it do a lot of the things that this PC does upstairs, uh, but for the downstairs environment. Um, it will also be on all the time, it's low, powered consum it's low power consumption, uh, which gives it that advantage too. Um, and I'll be able to do things like wake on LAN to wake the PC upstairs uh, using the little PC downstairs. Uh, the little PC downstairs will replace um, my upstairs computer for the home alarm system, which I'm, I'm sure you've seen already. If you haven't, it is here. Doing the pointy thing again. Um, and so, yes, I'll have a, a low power consumption PC, I'll have a backup solution, uh, I'll have a home automation system downstairs. Um, and yeah, that's, that seems like a really good way forward. Um, so I've bought it, and I've started going through the process of doing my backups now. Uh, and I thought I'd give you an idea as to how that can be done. So here, in uh, the shortest possible time I can possibly manage, is how to build yourself your own NAS storage solution for a hell of a lot cheaper, uh, and have four bays for probably the price of two if you had a NAS storage unit, um, and have your own operating system to do whatever you want with instead of the Synology uh, system you're probably going to get if you get yourself a, a decent Synology NAS storage solution. Um, and if you're feeling really clever and want to really get into the whole NAS thing, uh, you can actually install a Synology operating system port of, of their ROM, basically, of their operating system that was on the NAS drive. You can stick that on this micro server. Uh, so here is the pain that I've gone through so far. So, uh, here is a list of things you're going to want to do. First of all, buy a micro server, pretty obviously. The one I'm recommending is the HP ProLiant micro server, uh, retailing at the moment about £220. I think sadly for you guys it's gone up in the last couple of days. I'm pretty sure I only paid £190 for mine. I could be wrong. Um, it does say here 24 new from £185. Scout around, you're probably going to find uh, something a little bit cheaper. Uh, but get one of these, it's great. It has, a, uh, it has four bays in it for hard drives. Uh, and it's got a, a little CD drive if you wanted to put something in there as well. Um, it doesn't come with a CD drive, it only comes with one hard drive to begin with, um, and it comes with only 2 gig of RAM to begin with too. The RAM is upgradable, you can uh, put it up to 8 gig of RAM according to HP, or up to 16 gig of RAM according to the forums I've been reading. Um, I haven't read anybody putting 16 gig of RAM in it blowing up, so I wouldn't worry too much if you want to go that far. 
Um, I think two gig of RAM is suitable for a backup solution. Uh, and it's probably going to be suitable for a media center solution as well. Uh, I don't think you need much more than that unless you're terribly impatient. Um, if you're thinking of doing a, a VMware solution in which you've got more than one operating system within an operating system, uh, which I'm thinking of doing, I'm thinking about putting Linux in the Windows operating system as a VMware solution, uh, you're probably going to want a bit more RAM uh, because the virtual operating systems are going to chew up your RAM. Um, so it comes with two 50 gig hard drives as I said, that for me is in slot one at the top here. Uh, behind this door, which uh, Amazon conveniently haven't shown any pictures of what it looks like behind the door, it looks like this. Um, so in slot one I've got uh, a 250 gigabyte drive that came with it uh, and I've put my operating system on there, I've put on Windows 8. Uh, Windows 8, I hear you cry, are you mad? Go back to Windows 7. I am actually um, enjoying the speed of it, I have to say, on this little box. Uh, I would be using Windows 7 probably if I had a bit more RAM. Um, I thought about using Windows 8 simply because I hadn't done yet and I wanted to see what it was like. Um, and it's not that bad. I, did, I hated it at first. Um, I don't like the, the desktop thing, the start menu switching between some kind of tiles and the proper desktop. I hate that, I have to say. Um, but you can work around it and just get it to work the same way as Windows 7 pretty easily and, and once you've learnt your way around it's a nice nifty quick little thing and it's dead easy to set stuff up on um, for particularly for these purposes. So I've got Windows 8 on the first bay. In the next two bays I've put two 4 terabyte drives um, that retail at about £110 each off Amazon. Uh, why only two? Because I can't afford a third one right now. For the same reason I haven't put any more RAM in it uh, and I yeah, I haven't done much more with it. I haven't put an optical drive in it, I've chosen to use a USB stick to install the operating system which I'll go over shortly. Uh, and yeah, it is it's a little thing, it's not it's not huge, it's got it's um, all its stuff in here for uh, its processor and where you stick your RAM and that and then it's got four slots here for your drives and then it's got your optical drive so it's no bigger really than a standard NAS solution aside from the, the little extra top space which you could either stick a fifth drive in if you wanted to or an optical drive. So let's for comparison's sake look at a Synology uh, 4 bay NAS. Uh, a Synology 4 bay NAS is going to cost you £347.87 versus the £219.27 uh, and you're only going to get um, one gig of RAM you're not going to get the choice of operating system, you're stuck with Synology's operating system, which I'm not doing down, it is good, but I like to have a bit of freedom to play around. Um, and you're only getting, well, you're getting a dual core CPU, you're getting the same thing basically. Uh, you're getting four drives, uh, dual core CPU, but only one gig of RAM, and for a lot more money, and with no options to, to play around with it. So, you want one of these, trust me, trust me, I'm Paul Hibbert, trust me. <laughs> um, so that's what it looks like inside, beautiful little thing. Next, you want some RAM if that's if you want to do more with it as I've said. Um, you need to buy RAM that is compatible with this server. Do some googling, just google for RAM compatible with HP ProLiant micro server, you'll find a list uh, which covers off everything from 1 gig to 16 gig. Um, and 16 gig is quite a bit more expensive obviously and I'm not looking to do that just yet. Buy some hard drives, again, just search out 4 terabyte hard drive on Amazon, you'll find the same thing I've got, I've got some Seagates, nothing special. Um, another advantage of a micro server, as I haven't covered that off yet, is the fact it's very quiet um, and it's uh, not very power hungry, it's, it takes up very little power indeed, well worth getting. Um, right, buy a graphics card if you plan to use it as a media center. I should point out this thing without a graphics card is only capable of um, uh, the stupid blue cable that I can't remember the name of. You know what I mean. If you want HDMI port you're going to need to buy a graphics card to go with it. Uh, I'll show you the one that I've ordered, it's not arrived yet. Uh, I've ordered this XFX HD 545X ATI Radeon HD graphics card. Uh, it's not going to be a, a gaming PC, trust me, it isn't going to work like that. Um, you can run some very simple games on it, I've heard. I say very simple, I'm still talking about modern day gaming, but it's going to be very basic graphics. Um, but you want this so you can have your HDMI port. Without that, you don't have a HDMI. Um, you only need to do that if you plan on using it as a media center, of course. If you just want it as a backup solution, not necessarily. 
Right, update micro server BIOS. I found this out very late on in the game and I made myself very angry. Um, <laughs> you, if, you, if you're planning on putting Windows 8 on this, think again until you've put the micro server BIOS on it. It doesn't work. Um, something to do with the LAN driver. I, I disabled the LAN uh, in the BIOS for the micro server and I put in the um, I put in the Windows 8 uh, USB installation. It all went honky dory from there. But of course, then I've got no access to the network or the internet, so entirely useless. I had to update the micro server's BIOS. That sounds scary. It isn't. Don't worry. I'd never do anything scary. I'm a wimp. Um, so anything I ever tell you to do, it isn't scary at all. All you do is you put these files uh, on a USB stick. I'm going to put these in the description for you um, on a on a Dropbox. I'm going to put it in a Dropbox link for you. All you do is you put these on a USB stick. You put the USB stick in the machine. Uh, you wait until the BIOS starts to load for the micro server. You just hold down F10 on your keyboard. It'll load you into the uh, BIOS. Um, and you just need to choose the and the boot section set the primary boot device to be the USB stick uh, you'll need your USB stick in for that to be an option um, and then the next time you boot up it will boot from the USB stick and it will overwrite your BIOS with the new BIOS uh, once the new BIOS is in you can then switch the USB uh, files out for your Windows 8 OS uh, you need to just mount the USB stick using Rufus uh, so I was just going to come to that now. Install Windows on the microserver using a USB stick and Rufus. Uh, Rufus you'll find you can download for free and it looks like this. So this is on your main PC now. If you put Rufus on your main PC and you put uh, your USB stick into your main PC you'll find that you get the choice in here of your USB stick. Uh, and all you do is you click here to select an ISO and you pick out your Windows 8 or Windows 7 whatever it is you want to put on ISO image file uh, if you've downloaded an, an illegal copy which I wouldn't suggest to do obviously it's as simple as that you put the ISO on there uh, if you've downloaded a legal copy from Windows I believe it comes as an ISO file as well um, and you just do the same thing you pick the ISO file uh, if you're doing it from a Windows CD two options really you can either put an optical drive in the micro server which is easy enough to do and boot it from the CD uh, or you can um, I don't uh, to be honest I don't know I've not done it that way I'm pretty sure you would just rip the disk and find some software to turn it into an ISO file and then use Rufus to put it on the USB stick it's gonna be it's going to be simple enough to do I'm sure let me know if you get stuck so that's Rufus so all you do is you put Windows on to your USB stick using Rufus put the Rufus uh, bootable USB stick into your micro server's USB port and then boot from USB and it will install Windows for you. Uh, set yourself up your username and password and away you go. Once Windows is installed, install TeamViewer or set up RDP so you can control the PC remotely. TeamViewer, if you've not used it before, is so cool really I mean when when I were a lad this was a difficult thing to do to remote to a computer not so anymore I'm sure you've all used TeamViewer before but just download TeamViewer install it and uh, you it's so self-explanatory I'm not going into it um, if you want to do RDP that too isn't overly complicated uh, go to um, search type in remote spell remote correctly uh, and then click allow remote access to your computer it'll open you up in the right tab of system properties tick the allow remote assistance connections to this computer and press OK on your other computer you can then go to uh, start and then the search bar inside bin MSTSC and put in the IP address of your micro server if you want to know how to find the IP address of your micro server all you do is you go uh, run CMD IP config uh, and you'll see you have a IPv4 address here which is the IP address of your computer so if I put that now into MSTSC and press connect I'll get a similar thing to TeamViewer really I'll just get it full screen and I'll get the micro server accessible a little bit more quickly to me so that's the only advantage over TeamViewer really is that uh, RDP is a bit quicker um, yeah so that's that 
Uh, in disk management you need to format the new hard drives that you've installed as NTFS and partition them if it makes you feel better. I missed this out. Why is Linux a twat? Linux is a twat because I went through the process of installing Linux and um, desperately tried to uh, do things like partition hard drives and then share hard drives and install Google Chrome and, and all of these things ended up with me in a command prompt and that I just hate it, I hate it, I just want to use a GUI, I'm not that nerdy. Um, I am almost that nerdy, I did do some things um, but eventually I just came unglued, I couldn't get the drives shared across the network and it pissed me off. Um, so I just went back to Windows in a huff. I'm going to install Linux as a VMware uh, solution within Windows 8 just so I can have a bit of a play with it still. Um, but so far it's just not there yet for me, not from a consumer point of view. It, I just can't use it properly. So where was I? Um, so in disk management format your new hard drives as NTFS and partition them. You've probably done this before, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, but you just go to disk management again you I didn't point out but I'm right clicking on the start menu to get useful things out of it left clicking takes you to a horrible Windows 8 menu uh, so disk management and I'll give you this window in which it will show you all the hard drives that are connected to your computer uh, your hard drives as you probably are aware don't automatically appear in my computer until you formatted them as uh, as as something um, so a lot of people think formatting means wiping. Formatting means setting the disks format. Um, so I needed to set my disks as NTFS so I could view them on Windows and share them across my network. Uh, this is not going well. Loading disk configuration information. It's very slow. There we go. Um, so here you'll have your hard drives and all you do is you right click on them and go to uh, format and then you set them as NTFS. Uh, and once they're NTFS you can then partition them if you wish uh, they'll appear in here as one long strip so I have disk 1 and disk 2 and I wanted to turn them into Kablooey 1, Kablooey 2 and Humongo 1 and Humongo 2 I am now regretting calling them those things because it makes it more difficult to remember which drive is for what purpose without actually going into the drives I should have called them backup for uh, drive D on on uh, Alexander and back up for drive E on Alexander. Um, ignore me, Alexander. Listening to me, of course, because I've said his name. Um, so partitioning is uh, easy enough to do as well. Uh, you just go to new volume, I think. How did I do this? It was very easy. <laughs> Look up a guide on how to partition um, your hard drives if it makes you feel better. You could just put folders in them um, to contain your backups. It might be a bit easier. I felt happy partitioning them, so that's what I did. Um, so, set up home group on Windows on both devices. Again, there are loads of guides on the internet on how to do this. Uh, but quite simply, you need to go into uh, your network and sharing center. Uh, you then need to go uh, choose home group and sharing options you won't have that option you'll have um, add me to a home group or something like that you follow the wizard through it gives you a little yellow box with some uh, letters and numbers in it which is a passcode for people to join the home group you then go and do the same thing on the other machine you go to network and sharing center I think it's join a home group uh, and then you'll click join a home group. Uh, I don't have that option because I'm already joined to the home group. Um, so there's the home group. So once you've joined the home group, it allows you to share files across the network more easily. I don't know if you even have to join a home group. I just think it means that you have less things to say yes to and less permissions to set up. Um, so you then go to your hard drives that you wish to share. Um, I've got four here, you can see there are only really two drives, I've partitioned them though because I thought that might make me happy. It hasn't made me all that happy, I have to admit. <laughs> um, so you then right click on the drive, you go to share with, advanced sharing, um, and then in here click on advanced, so you click share if that button isn't already shared, click advanced sharing, uh, click share this folder, you can name it accordingly here, uh, I've just left it named as D. Um, and then you go to permissions uh, make sure that everyone has full control 
if everyone doesn't exist you click on add type in everyone click for check names it confirms that it exists as a user on the network you click OK and then you just click allow on all of those things so that your um, any, anyone on your network will then have full access to do what they want with this drive which is necessary to be able to back Windows up do that for all of your drives on this machine and then go back to your main machine and do the same thing in your main machine uh, so all of these drives you need to right click on them and go to share with advanced sharing if you're on Windows 7 it might be slightly different no it's exactly the same share this folder permissions set the permissions up that means that all of the, fo the drives on this machine will be accessible to the um, your NAS storage box uh, and all of the drives on your NAS storage box will now be accessible to Windows you then just need where are we uh, it's up to you if you want to map the network drives on your primary sh machine. I have done. That's dead easy as well. It just means that you have these server uh, folders. So if you want to access the, fo the folders themselves uh, from your main machine without having to use um, TeamViewer, you can do. So to map a network drive, right click anywhere in my computer, click add a network location, click next, choose a custom network location, click next, uh, click browse wait for that to load you'll find that you've got then your uh, computer uh, your NAS computer which I've called Alexander Pro stupid name um, Alexander is still called Chloe which he shouldn't be uh, I don't dare change his name in case it breaks something his name used to be Chloe he had a sex change um, and then choose the uh, folder or the drive that you wish to map the location of so I've got a D drive there uh, I can just press OK and it will map it uh, and in fact I have I've then renamed them to what they're actually called uh, rather than just being D, uh, sorry, sorry, D, E, F, and G, they are now the names of the uh, drives that are on the NAS box. There you go. Uh, so next, you need um, to use something like SmartSync Pro or similar to back up your drives. Um, I'm using Windows Backup to to back up Windows, which is very easy. I'll just go that through that very quickly. Uh, so that is in Control Panel. Uh, system and security backup and restore uh, and all you do is you click um, to set up the backup stuff it will take you through a wizard and again I've already done it but it's dead straightforward um, you just need to tell it to back up to a network location on the first wizard window um, I think if I go to change settings it will give me the same thing so on this window in a moment I should have the opportunity to uh, to map to save on a network there you go uh, and then you just pick the network location same way as you did just a moment ago um, to say I want to save on in my case a C drive where I've created a folder called Alexander Windows Backup um, you'll need to put in the username and password for your ProLiant micro server in my case it's uh, it's just the um, my hotmail details because when you set up Windows 8 it, pushes you into the the cloud it, it makes you use your hotmail accounts if you have one uh, or you whatever you call it nowadays Microsoft account um, when you've done that you just you you start the backup and it does it it will back up all of Windows uh, to to that location um, there's a tick box there somewhere to create an image what the image does is it gives you the opportunity later on to restore Windows just with a click of a button basically um, you would install Windows from scratch again and you would come to the Windows backup selection click restore my files and it would give you an option to actually restore Windows as, a, as, as it was previously not just the files that were on there um, so it's a good idea to click that button I think uh, so that will back up Windows to that location um, to back up the actual drives themselves I've used a slightly more bespoke solution I've used a program called SmartSync Pro because I I've had it for a lot of years uh, and <laughs> never used it like a moron um, you won't be able to uh, to find a, a torrent of that I don't think I looked for you because I know you're all naughty people uh, it doesn't uh, exist you will need to use something similar I guess or pay for it if you're crazy uh, crazy crazy talk it's about $45 I think um, but it is really good software I have to say uh, SmartSync Pro looks like this Um, so I've set up two what they call profiles in SmartSync Pro. Uh, all you do is you click Add to uh, set up a sorry rubbish 
file new profile uh, what do you want to synchronize folder from templates list I will select folders manually because I'm clever next available folders will give you all the folders that are available to you including the network locations of course that you have uh, set up so once you've networked the two machines together you can expand this to go and find um, folders on the home group uh, or on the network rather so if you go to network and then uh, Chloe PC which is my main computer and expand these things it will just take absolutely ages because I'm using a Wi-Fi connection unfortunately between the two machines uh, and then I can tick the folders or the drives that I want to back up it will scan the source directories and hopefully not take too long uh, and once this is done I'll be able to press next which will take me to another window uh, where I can select the location that I wish to back up to um, so come on quicker than that this is the problem with trying to do it over Wi-Fi um, I've been trying to back up my stuff now for a good few days uh, I would connect it via an Ethernet cable if I were you uh, when me and Nisha finally get our own place I will be doing that until that time I'm stuck with a Wi-Fi connection really uh, I might get one of those um, plugs that you can get which uh, sort of sets up an Ethernet connection across your electricity uh, power cabling um, yeah I'm gonna do that one day again not something I want to be spending money on right now as I've told you all earlier I'm getting made redundant thank you work you bastards I have an interview on Wednesday though second interview things are going well I suppose from that front right here we go destination directory where do I want to put these uh, these things and any software you get is going to be the same um, it's not a complicated thing to do really doing backup once you've, uh, you've got your head around what, what you're actually trying to achieve the software is going to make it pretty easy for you I think so I would do that and then press OK and then I would press next uh, it says it doesn't exist What's t what it's telling me is the folder um, is for putting this stuff in it does not exist so it's going to create a folder for me I'm going to say no for now I'm just going to put it in the main location ah uh, no I'm not it's going to make me do it alright it's going to create a folder I'll have to delete in a minute because I don't need to do this um, synchronize all files or only selected file types so in here you could say only do pictures or only do video stuff so really cool little options uh, I'm going to say all files uh, so new profile wizard I think this is it I think I'm done this is an exclusion list so I can say exclude certain files or exclude certain files of type I think uh, okay next um, so frequency I can then say I want to do it every day or I want to do it every week or I want to do it just the once or I want to do it manually uh, or also run at windows startup or when I shut it will shut windows down or on folder changes so on folder changes might be a good box to tick I hadn't thought of doing that myself um, just means obviously that every time you put something in a folder on one of those drives this thing's watching and it goes ah you've done something new I'll back that up um, it's clever software it's not going to do a full backup every single time it's only going to back up the files that you have added since it last backed up it will also delete files off its backup that you have deleted off your operating system on your other machine which is great it just means it saves space uh, so call it something and hit finish and you're done don't need that profile I'm gonna delete it so I've done this twice already I've um, set up a profile for each of my drives uh, that I have on my main machine I have boombox and happier box and both of those are backing up to uh, kablooey1 and kablooey2 uh, under the relevant folder boombox I really didn't need to partition these drives if I'm honest I could have just created folders within the one drive so I've now got eight terabytes of storage split into four uh, with my backups running all happily away I am a happy boy uh, I wasn't a happy boy before I did this so I was a very angry boy because I'd lost so much awesome stuff and it's going to take me a long time to really recreate those files and those settings more importantly for the software it's my installations drive uh, and I'm kicking myself for not having done this sooner uh, this was a cheap thing to do really it didn't didn't cost me a lot of money it's cost me a total of about 350 pounds I think but we're talking about an entire computer here really we're talking about something that I can use later on as a media center solution we're talking about something that I can put my um, 
my security system on I can have it connected to an IP camera I can have it watching my house I can have it I can have it doing loads of stuff I can have it doing anything that Windows can do I can upgrade it later I can put more RAM in it uh, I can put um, I, I could put in yeah you know what I'm saying I can put in bigger hard drives and I can just keep backing up stuff uh, and when I run out of space I can just put in bigger drives again and back it up to a bigger drive um, this is a great solution and it's so much better than buying one of these things and being stuck with it as it is if you're a wuss get one of these and let it do everything for you if you if you've got a little bit more about you than that have a proper home automation solution that you can control and you can do whatever you want with um, I've been Paul Hibbert for Hibbert's Home Automation or whatever it is I'm calling myself nowadays. Please subscribe to me. I know this has been a long one. I'm sorry if I'm terribly boring. I love you all. Goodbye.